so welcome. I'm Raymond Modulin. I'm the director of Real University. The course today is going to be more about you guys and less about me. All right. I know that's hard to believe for those of you that know me that always think it's always about me, which usually it is, but today it's not. All right. So <clears throat> what I have sent you or what is attached is the outline according to the state on how they want you to know certain topics. So if you went through the course with me, or if you are going through the course, you know we go by chapters, all right? The way we're going to go through it today is grouped by sections according to the way you're tested on the exam. So it's going to seem like we jump around in the book, and that's only because they have grouped certain things together. All right. Now, the confusion going on is I have heard several different things as we're coming out of this pandemic about the testing center not being open, but I do know that there have been several people that have already registered and have already taken the test. So apparently it is open to some degree, and I'm not really sure if they called them, if they did it online or what. But apparently the testing system is open for you guys to go ahead and take the test. Um, I have got a book with me. If you guys have your book, it may help you. The goal is for us to go through these topics. And if you have questions, I most assuredly want you to ask the question because I know the book. I've got my license. All right. So what I'm going to say today, I already know. I want you guys to know it. All right. So if you've got a question, either raise your hand, just speak out, say, hey, I've got a question or whatever. And we'll go through it like that. All right. Uh, we are going to take generous breaks to make sure that we don't all get numb sitting around. We will do a lunch break as well. And like I said, my plan is to be here till 4.30, 5 o'clock. If we solve everybody's world's problems before then, that's fine. This is mainly for you guys. All right. You guys ready? Ready. Ready. Amanda, you awake today? Totally ready. <laughs> All right. Totally ready. Well, let's get totally ready. So on this handout that I gave you, like I said, it is broken out into the sections and we're going to cover them based upon the way the course or the test has put them together. So for the first section here in part one, it talks about property ownership. Now, what that out to the side there where it says broker 10%, what that's telling you is, is that this is the broker exam and it's 10% of the questions. So now this, the, there are 75 questions. So this means that out of this next section, you can expect seven or eight questions to come from property ownership. Now, when they start talking about property ownership right out of the gate, the very first one in the outline is real property versus personal property and the conveyance. So my question is, and the, today is going to be all questions. I'm not really going to lecture a whole bunch. I'm more interested in you guys. So the first question is, what's the big difference when you're conveying real property versus personal property? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Remember, this is all about you. How do we convey real property? How it's attached to the land. I'm sorry, say that again. How it's attached to the land. D. Real property would include the land. What's the mechanism by which we convey real property? Through a D, right? Through a D. A D. You convey real property through a D. Personal property. Personal property. Bill of sale. A bill of sale. 
That is actually very important to understand. When you go buy a bicycle and they give you the receipt, that's the bill of sale. When you convey real property, you convey it with a D, all right? So they want you to understand that it is a completely separate and different process to convey real property because it's done by a legal mechanism called a D, okay? So now for the trivia question, and we are going to jump around. The trivia question is, what financing would include both real property and personal property? There is a loan out there that will actually allow you to convey both through a deed. Your mortgage? Not a mortgage. There is a financing loan. There's a loan type that specifically is geared towards personal property and real property all at the same time. Remember that they, they talked about this loan that you would actually use a deed and a convey personal property in it all at the same time. Everybody, let me see up here. On, in this 12th chapter, remember we talked about all the different types of mortgages. And one of them included, I guess it might be 13, all the other types of mortgages that were out there. Remember they talked about a package loan? Mm -hmm. yep. Remember what a package loan was? A package loan conveys real property and personal property all at the same time. And the example that I gave you guys in the course was if you buy a hundred unit apartment complex, all of a sudden you now got a hundred washers and dryers and a hundred refrigerators. The lender, a true lender is going to say, hey, I can't include that in the price because it's real property. I'm sorry, misspoke, misspoke. I can't include that because that's personal property. So there is a very special loan called the package loan, which takes into consideration personal property as well as real property into the value of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So in your notes there, right, package loan, because it's important, that's one of the financing techniques that allows us to convey both of these at the same time. All right. All right, let's talk about legal descriptions. I'm sure this is where you guys all are going to have fun with, if you remember chapter five, that deals with land characteristics and all of those things. So now let me see if I can get over to here. Yes, I probably should have had an outline. But remember, there are three types of legal uh, descriptions. Somebody give me the name of one of them. Meets and bounds. Lot. Meets and bounds is one. Lot and block. The lot and block. And government survey. And the government survey system. What is the meets and bounds? Remember, it literally is this simple. Start at that point of beginning. Meets means a distance. Bounds means a direction. You go a direction to some monument, back to some monument, back to some monument, and back up. And it always has to end with and back to the point of beginning. Very key for the meets and bounds. And it literally is you go east 200 feet, you go south 200 feet, you go west 200 feet, you go north 200 feet, and back to the point of beginning. It bounds the property. The, the cool thing about the meets and bounds is it does two things that the others do not. What two special things are in the meets and bounds that are not in the government or the lot and block? Remember, 
it does angles. The rectangular survey method tells you that it's only squares. This one does angles and it also does Monuments. more or less. If you remember the example in the um, book, let me move this over here. So I can Remember the example, it went down that way, then it went at an angle, and then it followed the creek, and then it went back up to the beginning. Remember there was an angle here, and this was, what was it, 200 feet more or less? Why was it more or less? Because the creek could move. So they have this more or less, same thing here. You remember that example from the book. So the meets and bounds allows for angles and allows for more or less. The government rectangular survey system, quick story, remember, they're exactly six miles apart, no changing. It creates very specific squares and rectangles where this one has something else, okay? Any questions on the meets and bounds? We don't use the meets and bounds a lot in the Indiana because of it was only used in the Northeast when they thought the land was small, like in that Virginia, North Carolina area. As they moved further west throughout the United States, they realized they needed something bigger. So they came up with the meets and bounds, or the government rectangular survey. This is nothing more than a series of principal meridians, all right? A principal meridian, and there are a bunch of them throughout the United States. Then running beside the principal meridians, remember, we have these parallel lines that run like this. And those lines are called what? Baseline. Range lines. If you yeah, don't right. remember the trick, remember the R. See how the, the top part of the R is vertical? That creates this section of land right here called a range. And then running parallel, or perpendicular rather, is a baseline. And what you create is this series of squares. These lines that run horizontal are called township lines, like the top of the T. It's horizontal. And it creates a strip of land called a tier. Right? Thumbs up so far? All right. If you have questions, remember, this is more about you guys being able to ask questions if we get bound up in something. Now, like the game Battleship, as you read these, every one of these tiers, the strip of tier that overlaps a range creates this thing called a township. How big is that township? 640 acres. Whoever said 640, that is a section. This is a township. There are 36 sections oh, yeah. inside of a township. Yeah. yeah. This is where a lot of times they try and confuse you on the exam. This is a geographic township. Remember these lines are six miles wide in both directions. So it creates a square. So what that tells you is that section is 36 square miles, right? It's six by six. That's where we get the 36 sections from is from that township. But that township has to be identified 
in a manner that no one else can be confused. So follow with me if you have questions. Notice the principal meridian. Now, I think it, I don't know if it's this camera is backwards or not, but if we go this way, this is one range. See this whole thing right here? That is one range to the west of our principal meridian. This one is two ranges west. That makes this one three ranges west. Everything in this range of land right here is three ranges west of the meridian. Now we got to go up. So here, let's do it in green. That is one tier, one tier north. Right? Thumbs up, or is there questions about that? Now's the time to ask. That's what this is for. Amen. Going, going. So what we had was, what was it? Three ranges west, one tier north. That was the uh, township that we looked at. And that township was 36 square miles, remember? It was six, six. by six. Now in that township, it is two big, so we divide it into 36 sections. Really bad picture. Yeah. And they are numbered one, and then they go this way, right? Right. Now, this section right here called Section 16. What's so special about Section 16? Hey, that's where schools is at. That is the schoolhouse section. Why? Because, because it is. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, I'll tell you why. Theoretically, if you look right here in this corner, that's virtually the center of that township. That's why they chose 16. Right? So now, how big is this section? Uh, I think now it's 640, right? Right. Let's move <laughs> this over here. Move this way. Okay. I thought I could move this. That's so much a bad idea. So if I live in section 23, I heard Shauna say it's 640 acres. This is where we start dividing into quadrants and then we divide those quadrants into quadrants and then there is a third one that gets divided as well how big is this green quadrant 10 10 acres all right so in this particular example It is the Northeast Quadrant of the Northeast Quadrant of the Northeast Quadrant of, and I told you we were in Section 23, Section 23 of, and it was three ranges west, one tier north of Principal Meridian number two. Pretty straightforward. 
So now's the time for you guys to shine. Tell me. And the key to this is start small and work out. Northwest. Somebody tell me, let's what's this first little one here? Northwest. Northwest. Would, the northwest quadrant. Everybody see that? Yeah. Now, if I looked at this second square here, darkened in area is now in what quadrant? Southeast. Plus what? Now in the southeast quadrant, right? Yeah. Northwest. Now you look at this square. So you've got the northeast, the northwest, the southwest, and then this square here would be the southeast. And you look at this square. Now it's back in the Northwest quadrant again. Thumbs up. Can we do another one? Sure. <clears throat> do another one. Let's do this one. So there's our section. There's the four quadrants. I'll give you a second. Look at them in the small square, the second, and then the third. So in the first quadrant, or the first number, it's right here. North so that would make it what? North. Northeast. North, North, North Northeast. Northeast quadrant. So now we look at the second square. Mm -hmm. It is still Northeast. In the Northeast quadrant. And we look at the third square, which is this entire section. It is now in the oh, I see. Southwest. 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 I got this. It is now in the southwest quadrant. So that particular example would be the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant of the southwest quadrant of section 23, three pages west, one tier north of principal meridian number two. Okay, I, have, I think I have a question. So with the, so the third box, we go off of the left side at the bottom, the full square, basically. Is that what I'm understanding with the southwest? Yep. Okay. It okay. Is, if you're looking at this whole section, there's the northeast, the northwest, the southwest, and the southeast. Mm -hmm. Let's do. I thought I could move this thing. It doesn't allow me. It, it allows me to make it smaller, but I can't make it bigger. Let's try it a different way.
What section is that? That's the Northwest section. Mm -hmm. Northwest, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So you told me the first one was the Northwest. Mm -hmm. Now where is it? Still the Northwest. Still in the Northwest of the Northwest. Of the Northwest. Now, this is not a very good drawing. <laughs> now, where is it? Of the Southwest. Here's the four. Gotcha. So see how we looked at it small, then we looked at it a little bigger, and then we looked at it the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Look small and work out. How many acres are in this? 640. All right. That would be the section. How many acres are in that? Oh, 23,000 some, some, some. That would be square footage. 160. Sure this little thing that we drew. Oh. Oh, that one's 10. Yeah. Well, you know it's 10, Shauna, because that you did the division. <laughs> There's also a math trick that can help you. What is the four de or what are the three denominators of this? Think of this like an equation. Four. See the denominator. Here's a fraction. There's a fraction. There's a fraction, right? And the denominator, I'm the denominator, is the bottom of the two. So that's a four. That's a four. That's a four. Four times four times four is 64. How many acres are in a section? Six hundred and forty, right? Okay. How many times does sixty-four go into six hundred and forty? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are ten acres. So if I told you it was the now northwest half of the northwest quadrant, how many acres are in that? You could draw this on your scratch paper during the test and figure out the north half of the northwest quadrant. Or you could save yourself yeah. some time and actually do the math. So if we looked at the fractions, there's the two fractions. The denominator here is what? Two. two. One here is a four. Eight. Two times four is eight. eight. How many acres are in a section? 240. 80. 240. How many times does eight go into 640? 80. 80. Therefore, this piece of property has 80 acres in it. And you could draw it, or you could do the shortcut and do the math. All right. So, if this guy owned the northwest half of the northwest quadrant of the northwest quadrant and the north half of the northwest quadrant, how many acres would he own? Here is the trick the state loves right here. Semicolon 